untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Junt midrange deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, because when in doubt you gotta Junt them out. And Junt midrange is a deck playing a ton of 2 for 1s and high powered cards, so we can usually overpower the opponent in the late game thanks to our high card quality. And one of the reasons we can now build a good Junt midrange deck is thanks to some improvements in the mana base, since Kaldheim brought us 8 new pathways in the Junt colors, which will make our mana base much more consistent. And then we've got some additional Kaldheim cards sprinkled throughout the deck, most notably Valky God of Lies at 2 mana, a legendary creature god that's a 2-1 that when it enters the battlefield lets us take a look at the opponent's hand and we can exile a creature card until Valky leaves the battlefield and for X mana Valky turns into a copy of the exiled card with converted mana cost X so that also gives us a nice mana sink or we can potentially play Tybalt Cosmic Imposter for 7 mana, a very powerful 5 loyalty planeswalker that immediately gives us an emblem that lets us play any exiled cards from Tybalt without having to worry about having the right colors of mana, so even if Tybalt dies we can still play those exiled cards thanks to the emblem. The plus 2 exiles the top card of each player's library, the minus 3 exiles target artifact or creature which we can then also play afterwards, and the minus 8 ultimate exiles all cards from all graveyards and we get to add triple red to our mana pool, so that potentially gives us a ton of card advantage. And the reason Tybalt is so good in this deck is that we can potentially ramp into him thanks to our green ramp cards like Cultivate, Lunar Visionary, and even Binding of the Old Gods, and then we also have Goldspan Dragon that can generate extra treasure tokens to help us ramp towards Tybalt, so we can get him in play ahead of schedule. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with a bit of cheap spot removal at 1 mana with Blood Chief's Thirst can also be kicked for 4 mana total to kill some larger creatures or planeswalkers, 2 copies of Heartless Act as a nice spot removal spell, then we've got our 4 copies of Valky, as well as 2 copies of Scavenging Ooze, which is fine to play early, but can also shine in a late game, as we can feast on those full graveyards, giving us extra life and plus humble swan counters, and also gives us a bit of built-in graveyard hate. 2 copies of Mace Mind Tome, just to give our draws a bit more consistency, and also great in the late game if we've got a ton of extra mana to work with. Then at 3 mana we also have 2 copies of Bone Crusher Giant, which we're often going to adventure first, dealing 2 damage to any target with Stomp, and then a 4-3 creature afterwards. Then we've got a bit of a ramp with two copies of Lanor Visionary, which draws a card when it enters the battlefield and can tap for green, so we can potentially play these powerful five drops on turn four, as well as the full playset of Cultivate. This is kind of the glue that holds the deck together, giving us ramp and mana fixing, and it's still a two for one as we get two lands for just one card. And then two copies of Soul Shatter as a nice removal spell, perfect at dealing with opposing copies of Goldspan Dragon since we don't need to target it, can also take out opposing Planeswalkers. And then a singleton copy of Rada, which lets us play Lands of the Top, so that can potentially give us a bit of card advantage as well, and the activated ability also threatens a lot of damage. Then at 4 mana, we've got two copies of Questing Beast, just as an individually powerful card that can take out Planeswalkers the turn we play it, and two copies of Binding of the Old Gods, which is incredibly powerful, destroying a target not land permanent an opponent controls when it enters battlefield, and then on the second chapter we can search our library for a forest card and put it on the battlefield tapped. So we've got three basic forests, as well as one Catria Triome and one Indatha Triome, which are both forests that also produce either red mana or black mana if we need some additional mana fixing, so we can search those up with binding as well. And then on the final chapter our creatures gain death touch until end of turn, which is just a nice bonus. Then at 5 mana we've got some heavy hitters, with 2 copies of Vivian Monster's Advocate, can provide card advantage by letting us play creatures of the top, can make 3-3 beast tokens each turn with either Vigilance, Trample or Reach, and the minus 2 can also come up, especially for playing a 5 drop, and then get to search up a questing beast, or maybe we want Scavenging Ooze for a bit of graveyard hate. Then 2 copies of Elder Gargroth as a 6-6 with Vigilance, Reach and Trample, that can generate more 3-3 beast tokens whenever it attacks or blocks, gain 3 life or draw a card. And then 2 copies of Goldspan Dragon, which we mentioned plays quite nicely with Tybalt as we can potentially ramp into it thanks to all those treasure tokens and also just a powerful card by itself that lets us double spell more efficiently. And then two copies of Garrick, Cursed Huntsman to top off our curve besides Tybalt, a five loyalty planeswalker that can generate two two wolf tokens, can destroy a creature with the minus three and draw card, and then the emblem if enough wolf tokens die can also give our creatures a nice permanent overrun effect. And then the mana base includes two copies of Castle Lochthwain as an additional card draw engine in the late game, a bunch of basic lands to search up with Cultivate, two Swamp, two Mountain, and three Basic Forest, and then all 12 pathways, 
with the eight new ones from Kaldheim and then the red green one from Zendikar and then also one Temple of Malady and one Temple of Abandon as it is nice to have a few dual lands that actually produce more than one color since otherwise we're just working with a single color of each land and then the two triumphs we mentioned that also play nicely with Binding of the Old Gods. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Turn to either Stomp or Ooze, and then Cultivate will help us get towards Garrick. Do I keep Castle? Would prefer, I guess, more green mana for Ooze. Don't know if we need to keep a land on top when we're about to Cultivate. Alright, so turn one Usher of the Fallen. So this could be a red-white Warrior's deck. So, I'm okay stomping here. But we'll wait to see if they have another creature they want to play first. Selfless Savior. Alright, I'll stomp now. And then we gotta carefully consider which lands to search with Cultivate. I guess we get Forest in play, Mountain in hand. And then we have the triple black for castle eventually. Next turn I can go ooze plus giant or maybe ooze, eat a creature, play a tapped triome so we can set up Garrick. Thirst is nice, so that'll force the issue on Selfless Savior. And then I could play this as a green source. So I can eat twice with the Ooze and block Aspirant. Although then I might not have triple black for Castle. So I think I prefer just playing Giant and Triumph for now. I'm okay if this trades, and then next turn Garrick can help us stabilize. Alright, Maul of the Skyclave, so now Garrick kill Aspirant. Looks quite good. And can even play a Tybalt next turn, which can also exile the equipment. And do we play around any haste creature? I guess they could have Fireblade Charger to give haste, but we won't be able to block that anyway, so... Probably not too many other haste creatures they can have. Alright, Showdown to refuel, that's a powerful new saga. Although they hit a lot of expensive cards, which they won't be able to deploy in time. So... Yeah, I don't hate playing Tybalt and getting rid of Maul, although it's not like they have any creatures in play currently they can equip. So maybe just applying a bit more pressure is the way to go. So can make some wolves. Stay on the trail. And then Gergroth plus Ooze. Is there a point playing Sweepers? It doesn't seem likely. And then probably still play this as black for castle purposes. And then next turn, if they don't wipe the board, they should be dead. Apparition can get rid of Bone Crusher. And a giant killer for Gergroth. Alright, fair enough. So now what? If I play Questing Beasts, can still pump Ooze once. If I attack with all 7, 8, 9, they would have to trade for Ooze and fall to 1. But it's probably better to just play Tybalt and Exile Apparition.
And our opponent concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Can go turn two Valky if we have to, turn three Cultivate, turn four Binding. Or we can hold Tybalt because we have Cultivate and Binding to help us frame towards the seven mana Planeswalker. But let's say the opponent's playing a red aggressive deck, we might not have a choice and we might have to run out Valky. Alright, given that we drew a second copy, I don't feel too bad about this. Opponent with triple bone crusher giant. Well, I guess Valky's not surviving for long. Should I take a bone crusher? I mean, I guess we'll take Ox since they've got a million bone crushers anyway. Although I don't think it matters here. Can cultivate, get at least one red and one black, and then binding, I guess, can get double black if we need to activate castle, or double red if we happen to draw a goldspan dragon or wanna stomp plus play giant. Hopefully, they just play bone crusher here. Or a timid calls a dead, can still destroy that with binding. Opponent did not want to exile Croxa to make a zombie, but now their graveyard's not full enough to escape. Alright, we drew an extra dual land, so this can get red and then pathway can be black for castle. And this turn I'm probably just gonna Soul Shatter. But we can do that in the opponent's turn too. So four cards in Graveyard, including Croxa. And they don't appear to have any answers for Planeswalker specifically. So we can play Tybalt and just plus and we should be fine. Alright, Fabled Passage means that they can maybe escape Crocs on this turn. So I might want to wait until end step to Soul Shatter, so we don't put an extra creature in Graveyard. Would have also been reasonable to just play Bone Crusher as a 4-3 as an extra blocker, but given the Heartless Act in hand, it didn't seem all that productive. So I'll take 4. Opponent's gonna stomp and play another giant. Alright, it's time for Tybalt to show up. Not the best hit. But even if they attack and stomp, Tybalt would still survive. You can hit harder than that. All right, opponent had a Murder Strider that deals with Tybalt's, and a Mire Triton to fill the graveyard. Alright, so opponent will start escaping Croxa soon, so we need to get on the board. Vivian's not a bad way to do it. So Vivian sees a goal span, which I sadly cannot play right now, but would will be a nice draw step. So for now, Vigilance seems best. And then I can stomp Mire Triton. Probably just play Swamp, and then we can discard Forest if needed. And maybe playing Forest was better actually, if they escape Croxa here. That's okay. Heartless 
Heartless Act can kill the beast token because it has a counter on it. So that's why they couldn't remove the token before attacking here. They were hoping to deal to, to Vivian and finish it off with Bone Crusher, but that didn't quite work out. So yeah, we should have played first last turn since discarding a land is the same as being empty-handed against Croxa. Although, shouldn't matter too much. So I don't really want to minus Vivian, because drawing Garrick is pretty good here. Otherwise, getting like a scavenging ooze or a questing beast with the minus would be decent. So instead, we'll just plus make another vigilance token. They can heartless sack my gold span. We get a treasure. And then Bone Crusher and the token can double block Croxa, which is fine. And then we'll still have a uh, Vivian in play. So yeah, I think Goldspan and, and Bone Crusher stay on defense. Question is whether we play Temple when the Scry doesn't matter. Next turn I can play Garruk. If I play Temple, I can also draw with Castles. So I think playing the tap line is still worth it. Although I guess the treasure maybe means we were fine keeping it in hand. Or in exile, I should say. Alright, so we've got our two blockers. Get to double block. They can escape another Croxa, but then we can just play Garrick Minus and we'll be okay. We are getting low on life, so gotta be careful that we don't get burnt out here. Tome's a nice pickup. So close game, but this is where John Midrain shines in these late game scenarios. Opponents just going face. So if they escape Croxa once again we're dead, but we can try to gain life with Tome before that happens. So I might get Scavenging Ooze with Vivian's Minus as soon as we get the chance. So really want to find a creature. I guess we'll draw the land. Maybe I should consider Scrying with Tome, but I guess we wouldn't be able to use Castle reliably with Cultivate unless we don't search a land to keep in hand with Cultivate, which is, I guess, reasonable too. Alright, so let's try this. Cultivate. Only search one land. I guess there's only one to search. Put that in play. Another Cultivate on top. So now I probably scry that to the bottom in the hopes of finding a creature on top of my deck. No creature. So yeah, we can activate Castle. But that's not going to help when we draw land. So no way for us to get a Scavenging Ooze in play this turn. You're not scared of dogs, are you? Every day is a new and then... Do we have a reason to attack? I guess might as well. So I'm dead to another... Croxa, maybe I should have kept Cultivate in hand. 
Liliana is fine. So now we can draw with Castle. We are dead to another Stomp, but they've seen most of their Bone Crushers. So no escape just yet. Thirst to kill my token. Instead of going after a Planeswalker, I guess it worked out. They thought they could kill me with Liliana, I suppose. Do we want to draw Heartless Act? It's not bad. But it's also no creature. And the closer we get to Croxa, the scarier it becomes. I guess we'll draw for now. Binding. So Binding can deal with Liliana. And now Visionary gets Ooze. Alright, so... Can I do everything here? I think I can. Minus two. Draw, Tybalt is pretty nice too here, but we'll just binding using as little green mana as possible to kill Liliana. And then Ooze can gain some life, exile Croxa. And we should be safe now. pass. Shadow Skull smashing for six. All right, kills our two planeswalkers. Fair enough. I think we're still fine here. Can play Tybalt. We're about to gain four with Tome. on tap. One land left. I could plus, I could minus on the Murder Strider so we can start attacking with our tokens. Would have also been a reason to maybe Heartless Act Murder Strider instead of the 4-2 so the 2-2s could attack, but yeah. At this point the game was decided once we got to Ooze and were safe from any burn spells. So yeah, this was a nice grindy matchup, getting to showcase Jun's entire arsenal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent opening hand. Couple early removal spells to buy time for our Planeswalkers to hopefully take over a board that's not too far behind. Yeah, I want to be able to play a 3-drop if we draw one. Rada's nice because it helps me hit my land drops, unless it doesn't. I think I still keep it. Not as good as a Cultivate would have been. But it can also block Swarm Shambler without us having to use a removal spell. Alright, so we're drawing a line for next run at least. We've got double red for gold span eventually. Do you want to try and kill Ooze before it gets a counter with Heartless Act? So Primal Might here could be bad. Gem Racer's okay. So we're probably gonna Soul Shatter then. Although that does prevent me from then using Heartless Act on Ooze if they exile some creatures. But it's probably still worth it.
Aha, uh -huh. we get to punish them. With Soul Shatter. So that worked out nicely. And now it's time for Gold Spain. And now Rada might as well attack since there's two creatures in the graveyard, so we won't be able to block the Ooze. And then, yeah, we even had the mana for Heartless Act here to kill Ooze after Goldspan attacked. So that was quite a beating. Next turn, can play Garruk and take over from there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing black mana. Although, we do have a Temple to Scry to give us a chance to find it. And then Binding also ramps and is quite nice in combination with Tybalt. So, for a hand that doesn't have any castable cards, I actually don't hate it. If we find Cultivate, we can also get black. So there's a lot of decent draws. Alright, there's Cultivate. So next turn we get to get two Swamps. And now Binding can kill the first permanent opponent presents. Although Cultivate means we're just both ramping. Alright, Tome's not bad. Feels better than playing an Ooze with no creatures in the graveyard. And Goldspan can help me get to Tybalt. Gergroth, perfect target for binding. So that seems good. If we had an extra land, I could have maybe like attacked with Goldspan and then used Soul Shatter after getting the treasure, but that doesn't quite work out here. I think binding's okay. And then scry with Toman of turn. I meant to scry an upkeep, but forgot to put my stop in time. Uh -huh, battle of Frost and Fire, so they've got some giant synergy. Keep a land. Search up an extra triome. Get the black one. And I think I should probably keep Soul Shatter in hand. Alright, there's double reds and a Genesis Ultimatum. Alright, we'll see what the opponent hits. Can maybe use Soul Shatter. Alright, opponent just hits a bunch of lanes. So not the most exciting Genesis Ultimatum, but... Did give them a lot of extra mana, so next turn could be scary. And then for now... Probably just cry. Another gold span. So opponent could have like an Ugin to wipe the board. Yeah, I mean gold span isn't bad. I'll keep it. And then, now I can maybe play Tybalt. And if they do have an Ugin to wipe the board, Goldspan with Haste can also potentially finish it off. Without having to use Soul Shatter or Thirst. Alright. Attack. Could use Binding to destroy. Battle, Frost and Fire. Which is reasonable. Could ramp with uh, Fertile Footsteps, got a few options. Could have a look with Valky 
to see what they've got in hand, but the uh, scariest cards are non-creatures. So I kind of like binding. Alright, so let's see if they've got Ugin. They do. So if they minus seven, and just trades for my board. But they also lose Ugin. So that happens. No need to scry, probably keep it for draw. I guess goal span plus Gergroth. Uh, never mind, doesn't work since we're one mana short. So another Tibalt it is. So you've seen through my disguise. Soul Seer to deal five to it. Would have liked to hit a land, but that's okay. So they probably have a way to finish off the vault, maybe a Bone Crusher. Although Shark Typhoon is spicy. Looks like scrying now with Tome to find a land is not a bad idea. Tap land, how do we feel about those? Yeah, I guess it's still fine. I can fertile footsteps and then the land will come into play untapped. And that still lets me play a 5 drop. Probably gonna be Gergroth here is my guess. Could also play Shark Typhoon first before we cast our non-creature spells. But I think I like uh, developing my mana. Yeah, I think we'll play Gergroth, plus we also tapped our red mana, so we don't even have the option of playing Goldspan, but that's okay. Opponent cycles Wilt, they were probably holding it to deal with Typhoon. into the royal to bounce it. So if I play Typhoon now, we still have three mana left over. But I want to keep Soul Shatter for another Ugin. So I think Gold Span plus something else, second main is probably better. Got an embarrassment of riches here. Also playing Shark Typhoon could be bad if they have another bounce spell like Into the Royal or Brazen Borrower to bounce it back to their hand. Another Cultivate, but our opponent's out of basic land. So their last card has to be pretty good. I'll take four in case they have a four damage sweeper. Just a stomp. That's not gonna cut it. So this is probably the most straightforward way. Although I feel like we need to play Shark Typhoon for the fans. And that's game. 
So yeah, Tybalt lines up pretty reasonably against Ugin the Spirit Dragon, just because Ugin is forced to minus 7 if there's a Tybalt in play. If her opponent already has Ugin in play, it can be a little tricky to get rid of it, but we do have cards like Soul Shatter, Blood Sheaf's Thirst, and some haste creatures like Questing Beast and Goldspan that can pressure Ugin right away. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.